All right, so I got everything mounted back on. I got the horizontal table on. I got the router mounted with a hose clamp. Uh, I put my stops in here, which just lock in with a wing nut. Now what I need to do is to get a little bit more depth of cut, I'm going to hollow out about a half an inch of this fence, but I'll first mark it by just lightly touching the back of the fence with this spiral bit, and then I'll know where it has to be hollowed out. But first I'll put my handle on. And as you can see, I had two little marks here and here. Now I know where the start and stop of the hollow is going to be. And I'll just clean that up with a chisel. Alright, as you can see, I got this all hollowed out now, which is going to give me that little bit of extra depth of cut. And I'm going to go ahead and mill my first slot. The biggest slot I'm going to use in this is 3 8 of an inch. Probably the biggest difference between the old slot motor and the new one is what's used for the left and right motion. Uh, on this old one you can see I use this rod and bushing setup and on the new one I did away with that and went to a drawer slide. And I did that for a few reasons. Uh, first it's just a lot easier to drill two holes through a long block like this perfectly parallel is just really tricky and secondly there's just not a lot of room in here it's very congested and not a lot of room for the handle or the stops and thirdly uh, after using the slot moisture for a while I realized that these stops are far more critical than I originally thought and I needed a good way to scale or reference where they're going to be stopped at and uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean there. The reason why we need to set these stop blocks a lot more accurately is because the router itself needs to move left to right from center the exact same amount. Because what can happen is, let's say that the router moves more towards the O than it does the X. What that will do is offset our reference marks we put on our workpiece by the amount it's off but center. And the reason why it does that is because well let's say we cut this piece first and we put it on there as you can see the X and the O line up but where we're off center our mortise is going to be cut more towards the O now when we go set our other workpiece on as you can see the X and the O don't line up and now the mortise is going to be off center more towards the X and that's why our workpiece will end up with our marks not lined up. So what we're going to do to make sure we move both these stops the same amount is use some of this adhesive back measuring tape. We're going to stick a piece right here and another one for the other stop. Now I got the router mounted dead center with the router bit lined up with the center line on the fence. So when we glue this on the movable table we'll be able to set a reference mark on our stop lock which means that at this point we are at dead center and to make sure we move them the same all we got to do is make sure that both of them are reading the same measurement. Alright so I just cut a section of the measuring tape at the 12, 13 and 14 inch mark. And this side here is actually going to end up being upside down because the measuring tape only reads from left to right obviously that's okay now I still have the routers at dead center so I can make two reference marks one at the 12 inch mark on this stop block and one at the 24 inch mark on this stop block and I'm just going to pencil these reference lines in so we can easily change them if it has to be calibrated later And that's all I'll put there for now. Alright, so the last thing we got to do now before we put a coat of finish on this is make a stop block for the depth of cut. And it's going to be mounted right in here and it'll stop up against the fence. Uh, I'm going to make this at a half inch plywood and we can use the slot mortiser itself to uh, put the slot in. Alright, so I went ahead and cut my material out for my stop lock and I made a reference mark in the center here and also the center here. So 
I'll go ahead and move that up until my center lines line up. Like so. Lock that down. And line these center lines up. Uh, I might as well mention now too, I made these toggle clamps and all they are is a piece of quarter by one inch aluminum flat bar where I put a little bend in with a T-bolt and a thumb nut. And I already took the time to set my stop blocks. I want a slot that measures two and a quarter inches long, so I just set each block at an inch and an eighth. And I should be good to cut my slot. Looks good. Alright, to mount my depth stop here, all I did was add a T knot here, and I'm just using a bolt with a wing nut on it. The stop isn't nearly as critical as the left and right stop. Alright, so I got everything all taken apart now. I'm going to go ahead and get everything a rough sanding and a couple coats of polyurethane. And after that, we'll put her all back together and we'll talk about dust collection. Alright, so I got this thing all back together and the last thing we got to do to help combat against dust getting in around these slides is add some dust collection. And So the last motor shirt I had didn't have any dust collection at all, but uh, this one here I took the time to come up with something. And it's actually pretty simple. All this is a piece of 2 inch PVC pipe with the bottom part cut out, which gives me a slot right into here. And with a little box built around it, it can sit right on top of the fence like this. So, uh, held to place with just two screws so you can easily take it off. And as you can see on this side, you don't lose any depth of cut here. It goes all the way in and still full range left to right. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works. Alright guys, that pretty well wraps up the build of this slot motor. Uh, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. It actually has quite a few improvements over the last one. Um, if you want to see what it's capable of doing, I'll put a link in the description below for that. But I will leave you with a short demo. I got a work piece here, a piece of scrap that I've cut. I've added a couple of reference lines too. And we'll add a floating tendon here and see how close our reference lines stay together and how flush we stay on the edges. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but our reference lines here are perfectly made it up and it is perfectly smooth across the seam. So I'm real happy with the accuracy of this.